Um, today we're looking at the OpenXR LiveLink plugin. Um, so, um, quite a quick and easy one, um, despite no resources about it at all, annoyingly. Um, <laughs> it's usually the case. Uh, what we've got here is, um, this one's actually from our drone camera um, one, and I've just changed it to work back with the Vive tracker. So, the traditional method of, I guess, <laughs> camera tracking um, in Unreal, all the way back from my very first tutorial, um, is this, the Get Device Position Orientation, which is part of Steam VR, and so that was a big revelation, at least to me, um, to get the Oculus working was just use Steam VR. Um, who would have thought it? Um, this is some people use the... Um, now, there is another method um, some people have been using, which is the motion controller component here. I cannot, for the life of me, bind the Vive trackers to motion controller, um, pose things inside Steam VR, and it's an ongoing nightmare for me. So, uh, I've just been sticking with this, uh, and it's been working fine, but it has its issues, especially when you start introducing more than one tracker. Um, it was start to become a nightmare, even when I was doing my focus tutorial, and that was only doing using two of them. Uh, because these device IDs get thrown around. They get thrown around, they get changed, you restart Unreal, you restart Steam VR, and they're all different. It's beyond annoying. Um, so, there is a new plugin called OpenXR LiveLink, which uses the LiveLink subsystem in Unreal to get data, transform data from things like the Vive trackers and the control on the headset. Um, instead of Steam VR, um, and that's got a few benefits which I'll go through. So to get it working you just have to enable it in the plugins. Um, it is under virtual production, so there it is, LiveLink XR. So just tick it and restart the engine. So once we have restarted the engine, um, you can go ahead and open the LiveLink panel. Um, mine automatically opens up over here. So under source, we will now see LiveLink XR source is a new thing. Um, and in here, uh, we can choose whether we want to show the just trackers, just controllers, or HMDs, or all of them, or tick and whatever. Um, the other thing in here is the refresh rate of the tracker, how often it will update. So I could be wrong, but I believe Steam VR, at least with the 2.0 base station, updates at 120 hertz to match the um, the um, Valve Index, like its frame rate, um, and I know the Oculus updated 120 FPS uh, Hertz as well. Um, so you can change this. Um, it's probably um, I would recommend if you're doing um, like mixed reality stuff to make it divisible by your frame rate. So if you're doing 30 FPS, then 60 is fine. If you're doing 24 FPS, then make it like 48 or 96. Um, if you're doing 25 FPS, make it like 25 or 50 or anything along there. Um, and I will show you and I'll tell you in a minute why um, that is you should do as well. Um, another thing, but um, we're going to go ahead and just only show our tracker devices and there you go. So we've got one Steam VR tracker, um, and as we add more, they will show up in this list, and they have their own like ID that never changes. So the more the merrier. You don't have to worry about them swapping randomly. So um, one of the great things about it, which is why is that? Why is it missing? Wait a minute. Here we go. So if you click on the XR source overall, not the tracker, but just the XR source, um, what you'll find is this evaluation mode. So this um, is handy because we can now tell it to update with the um, incoming timecode through like a Blackmagic or Aja card instead of just the engine's timecode. So now we can sync Vive trackers with a timecode so things like frame offset and everything is going to be nice and exact and just very nice. Very, very happy about that. And so that's that's one of the main reasons for using LiveLink, especially with those um, sort of uh, AR applications and mixed reality stuff over a um, just the original method. So the last thing we can do is if we click on it, we can add these 
um, translators and pre-processors. So the translators, um, maybe it's the yeah the pre-processors. So we can use a pre-process to swap the axes for us. So it, um, as everyone may be well aware nowadays. Um, the vibe tracker is supposed to go with the light pointing up and the prongs pointing forward, and that is forward. Um, many people mount it, um, not surprisingly considering where the quarter 20 mount is, uh, with the prongs facing directly up. Um, I would actually advise against that because you sort of occlude a lot of the sensors on the inside of the tracker, but um, if you do mount it up then you've got to do these like... Um, I did one where it was just using a sort of a parent-child offset. Some other people have been doing like like an add rotator, then lerp rotator, like these double up rotator things to get it. Um, you can just use a pre-process instead to just apply that to the data straight away. So now that we've got all that out of the way, uh, how do we use this? So um, I said it was very simple and it is. We're going to unplug our event tick and delete our get device position and orientation. Drag over the event tick. Uh, if we type live link, live link, um, under the live link section, we want the evaluate live link frame. See, there's a few things in here. We're just going to go, the not that one. I clicked on the wrong one. So we want to evaluate live link frame. So we are then going to choose the Steam VR tracker. There you go, and you can see it's. Um, unique ID, so mine is B47B6, like so. Um, B, B47B63, oh, there's even more to it. Um, so we're just going to sh choose that, and we are just going to choose transform role, like so. And so now that is going to evaluate the all of the data coming in for, through Live Link about this tracker um, on this frame, so when it gets ticked. Um, we're going to bring out the data result and we're going to break it. We're then going to break the frame data and you'll see right here is a transform node. Handy dandy. Um, if it is a valid frame, which it should be, we're going to then go to our set location and rotation. Um, I'm going to split the transform and plug it in. And just like that it's done. So these three nodes um, you can just slot in wherever you are using the other one, the Steam VR one, instead. So you can just slot these in instead and we're all um, hunky dory. So now if I hit play and it is tracking um, and there is nothing interesting to look at. Where's the... T there it is. Ta-da! I need to try and... I'm just had it handling the raw tracker with absolutely nothing on it. Um, but yeah, there we go. Now it's lined up perfectly. And we're using it. Um, so, the other thing, you can have li the Vive Tracker update in the editor without hitting play, which is cool, but uh, to do that, uh, all we have to do is, I'm just going to make a new blueprint to illustrate this. I'm um, going to name it something rememberable. Um, for that we just type a live link controller and add a live link controller um, component. Select the tracker and uh, I'm also going to add a cube just to illustrate it. Now if I drag this out, you'll see, just like that, it is now being updated. The problem with this, there is the inherent problem which is why I did not show it first, is this is updating the scene root, like that. So there is no way of offsetting that. No matter where I drag this to, it's always going to be relative to the vibe tracker in the world makes it pretty useless, in my opinion. Um, so you can forego the it running outside of play mode, but then gain the ability to have it be adjustable as you go. Um, so this is in the drone one we did, so it's got the 
rotate and strafe and forward and focus and I don't have a USB cable on my desk here to plug in the Xbox controller to demonstrate that. Wait, is that one? Ah. Apparently USB micro B mini B. No micro B. Um is very hard to come by these days. Um, I've only got USB-C everywhere, but I did find the wireless adapter for my Xbox controller. So now if we have a look at it, and point the Vibe Tracker at something worth looking at, we can now move around like we had on our Xbox controller set up. I don't know what the buttons are for this, wait a minute. Wait, there we go. Hey, there we go. Okay, so that, and then that um goes out ah there, there's the lens gosh it's been a while since I was in this project um and then that what moves in ah lot just like that so we're using live link and we are affecting the rotation and everything using an Xbox controller so there's don't know what more you'd want really so awesome Thank you for watching, um, that's it. <laughs>